Hey, what's up? And I'm back and you're back unless you've never been here before. So if you haven't been here before, hey, welcome to the channel. Uh, uh, hi. So in this video, we are going to be doing the selection brush tool. And I'm super excited about this one because this is really the, once you learn how to do this, you can pick objects and people and separate them from backgrounds and foregrounds and really build really cool photo compositions. So as always, I'm going to reset my studio. So your screen looks like my screen by going up to window studio, reset studio. Okay. So your selection brush tool is in your tools on the left hand side here. Now, as always, if you put your mouse over top, it will tell you what the tool is and in brackets, what the shortcut on your keyboard is. So there's a couple different ways to select things in affinity. I only use personally the selection brush tool and the pen tool. Now there are other options like the flood select, which can work at certain times. It's good for certain things. And also uh, there's these tools down here. So with affinity, you know, there's a little triangle in the bottom right corner, which means there's more tools. There's, there's these tools here as well, which you can use to select things for very specific things. I don't use them too often, but they're there. So let's go, um, let's do something. So I'm going to, I'm going to select this leaf. Now I'm picking a really simple one in this first example just to give you an idea how it works. So I've got my picture selected. I'm gonna go up to my selection brush tool. And now when I do it, you'll see that my mouse changes to a circle. Now I can make the this selection brush bigger or smaller by using this, this, <laughs> this width um, a bar here up at the top. So if I go up here, you see I get a giant circle. And if I scroll down, it gets a little bit smaller. You can also make your brush bigger or smaller by using the bracket keys on your keyboard. I'll put it up on the screen, but um, if you use the right bracket, it gets bigger. If you use the left bracket, it gets smaller. So uh, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller, maybe a little bit smaller here, maybe a lot smaller. And I'm also gonna do is click and just start sort of painting what I want. And as you see, there's these, they call them marching ants, these little things that are forming around it. So. I'm gonna go paint around it. It looks pretty good. I'm gonna zoom in. There's a little bit here. So it looks pretty good. This is a pretty simple selection. Now I just wanna show you, in the top left corner, there's a mode and there's add mode and subtract mode. I'm in add mode right now because I'm adding to my selection. If I were to click and go a little bit too far out here, I, what I could do is by getting rid of this, there's a shortcut for this, but I'm not going to talk about it right now. You will use it and you'll get really good at it, but you can go up to subtract up here. And now your selection is in subtract mode so we can get rid of this stuff. So now it goes back to the um, proper selection. Okay, so now we have to refine the selection. So in your top toolbar, look for the refine button. We're going to click on that. And then we're going to get this refine selection window. Don't worry about any of these things right now. I'm going to explain a little bit in the next one. Everything in this one is very simple. The red means it's not selected. The thing in the forefront, the color means it is selected. So the selection looks pretty good. Here's the only thing I'm, I'm gonna point out in this one. Under preview, right now we're under overlay. So you can see what this will look like with different backgrounds. So if I wanted to see it under black, this is what it would look like. If I wanted to see it under pure white, this is what it would look like. Black and white is sort of like a mask thing, which I'll explain later, but this shows you how it looks in a black and white. This is really good to see if you're doing some something like animals with fur or whiskers or sometimes hair, because you can really see the fine lines. So I'm just gonna go back to overlay. So my selection looks good, I like it. In the bottom um, selection box here, there's output. Now the options are selection, mask, new layer, new layer with mask. I always select new layer. Now new layer means basically it's gonna create, it's gonna take this leaf, it's gonna make its own layer, and that way I can move it around, manipulate it, change that particular layer and not worry about anything else. It also does something called color de decam decam I'm going to say this wrong. Color decontamination. Got it. Okay, so what that means is is if you ha selected something with more of a busy background with some colors, Affinity does its best to basically ignore those colors and just focus on what you're selecting. So when you're editing into something else, it's a little bit easier. So I'm going to select a new layer and apply. So when I hit apply, You'll see in my layers panel on the right hand side, I have my original picture and I have my pixel layer. Now right now it looks like it's the exact same picture that I had, so I'm gonna click on my move tool. I'm going to make sure that this guy is off and now I can just move this around. I can resize it. Now I'll just show you how it's isolated. So if I went up to a layer, new fill layer, and I dragged a fill layer to the bottom and then I changed the color to whatever, this color, you'll see 
that it is now isolated. So this leaf is now isolated. I can move around. I can put effects on it. Um, again, I don't want to do anything too crazy here. I can put effects on it and it's just going to affect this leaf. So that is a basic example of the selection brush. So let's do another one, a little bit, a little bit harder. Okay, so we got this model here. She's on a background. It looks fairly simple too because she's not, there's nothing too busy behind her, but there are some shadows and there is some stuff and her shirt's a bit busy. So we'll see how Affinity handles this. So I'm gonna go grab my selection brush tool again. I've got the model selected. I'm gonna grab my selection brush tool. I'm gonna to make my thing a little bit bigger and I'm just gonna start painting. Now it's doing a pretty good job grabbing her leg, grabbing her shoe. I'm gonna paint over here, got her shoe. And now as we get to her shirt, you see it's, I'm gonna zoom in a bit. It's a little bit harder for Affinity to figure it out because there's a lot of blues and whites and stuff going on. So I'm gonna paint as best I can over top of her. I'm gonna paint her shirt and over here, and then we're gonna get her hat and her hair. Now hair's, hair, we can refine this. So this actually is really good, believe it or not. It doesn't look perfect, but I'll show you how we'll fix that. So I'm just gonna make sure if I go around her shirt, make sure everything looks selected. If you can see in here, it's got a pretty good selection, but I need a bit more here and a bit, uh, just a bit more here and a bit less in some spots. So I'm just gonna make my brush a bit smaller. I'm just gonna paint over here. Now see that I did that, it it removed everything. So it's that's not what I want. So I wanna subtract this. I gotta get rid of this spot here. I'm gonna go to my subtract in the top left. I'm gonna paint in here and Affinity does a pretty good job finding it and saying, okay, this is, you don't want this part. So now I that's good. I'm gonna go back to add because I gotta go touch up over here. So I'm going to touch this up. I'm going to touch this up over here, maybe a bit over here. This looks okay, not too bad. Her hair, I will leave and show you how to fix that. This part looks okay. It's not perfect, but it's not bad. So that's a pretty good selection. Okay, so now that we have what we think we want selected, we can fix this. We're going to go to refine, and it comes up. Now, you can see she had a yellow background behind her, and you can see in her hair, you can see that. So when this if I were to uh, isolate this picture, you would see all that stuff. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the matte brush. By default, it comes up as matte. And again, this basically, Affinity, Affinity basically, you're telling it, hey, can you relook at this spot again and try to fix it? So I'm gonna make my brush a little bit smaller and I'm just gonna click with matte selected around her hair and I'm just gonna paint this portion here, which I want Affinity to look at again. So if you look at it, it did a pretty good job. I'll show you with a, a different background, but we're gonna do her hair over here as well. I'm gonna paint over top of that with matte and that looks pretty good as well. Okay, so let's see what this looks like with a different background. So with black, pretty good. With white, pretty good. So there's also these options to feather. Uh, I'll show you quickly sort of what it does. I don't use feather in that, that much too often. Uh, it's good for really minimal things. If you see I have feather, it's sort of trying to make it a little bit less harsh around the edges, but it's a, oh, sorry, I picked ramp there. My bad, reset ramp to zero. Um, it tries to make it like a little less harsh, but it also is gonna give you more of the uh, background, which I don't want. So I'm just gonna turn my feather back down. So you can play with those settings. Every picture is honestly different. So now that I've got the selection I think I want, I'm gonna go to selection. And as always, again, I pick new layer because it does color decontamination and it's gonna isolate it on its own layer so I can, I can play with it. So I'm gonna select new layer, hit apply. And then in the right-hand side, you're gonna see my selection. So what it usually does is I have the original photo here, which is turned off, and I have the new selection. So I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is get rid of the old photo. I don't want it, so I'm just gonna delete it. Okay, so now I have this model here. She's isolated, and from there, here's how you can start building compositions. Now there's a lot more to it, but I can just click different backgrounds. I can put her in front of this. Again, it's not gonna look you know, you'd have to really work at your photo compositions to make them look real, but you can put them in front of different things. You can change it, you can resize them. You can do all kinds of effects. This would be an overlay effect just to show you, um, like a blend mode, I'll show you something like this. So your options with Affinity are pretty, pretty cool. Hey everyone, I just wanted to do a quick note here. I forgot to explain what the foreground and the background brushes are. We already talked about the mat um, going around the, the subject and trying to let Affinity uh, figure it out for you. But the foreground brush essentially is you can uh, tell Affinity essentially what you want. So this, this car here, if I pick the foreground brush and I wanted to let it know, hey, this is actually foreground, this is the subject I want, 
you can kind of paint affinity will do its best to uh, finish the rest for you because you basically told them hey this area is actually foreground and backgrounds the same so in this car here if I wanted to pick the background brush and I just painted in here painted a section to let affinity know hey this is actually background it'll do its best to um, get rid of it and throw it in the background for you so sometimes it does a really good job, sometimes you gotta go around and just touch up, but I just wanted to quickly explain um, those two brushes because I forgot, so uh, back to the video. Um, so yeah, that is the selection brush tool. You can get really refined with it. We'll, we'll do some other videos and get really involved. I just want you to get a basic understanding of how you pull something from a, from a, a photo and edit in other things over top to really build a photo composition. If you wanna see any of my previous photo compositions, just look through my videos. I've got a couple um, that show adding things, taking things away, changing colors. I'll show you how to do all that in future videos. Thank you for watching. Please, please, please hit like and subscribe. That would mean so much to me. And I will see you guys in the next one.